So in my initial set of slides on Thursday for my first lecture, I had several typos in my questions. My apologies. I'm still getting used to uh, all of this setup, and I realize I need to do a better job in the future of proofreading. And so some of them I was able to kind of fix on the fly, but I do want to go through everything nice and slowly so that if there's any residual questions, uh, you can understand them. So the first one that had an error in it uh, is going to be the integral from natural log 3 to natural log of 4 of e to the minus 2t dt. It's a multiple choice question. It gave you four different choices for what this is equal to after you did a substitution. And when you did a substitution, it's pretty clear from context from the choices that you had to make the substitution u is equal to minus 2t. And so then du is minus 2 dt. And so when we make the substitution, I guess I should say one more thing, minus 1 half du is equal to dt. And so now let's go ahead and make these changes over here. So we have the integral of e to the minus 2t is u. That's why we made a choice of u. dt is minus 1 half du. And we have to change the bounds. So when t is equal to natural log of 3, u of natural log of 3, plug it in up here, is minus 2 times natural log of 3. And u of, when t is natural log of 4, u of natural log of 4 is equal to minus 2 times natural log of 4. So before I plop those in over here, I want to do just a little bit of manipulation here because I can bring these exponents up. And so this becomes log of 3 raised to the minus 2 power, and this is log of 4 raised to the minus 2 power. And properties of logs tell us, so 3 to the minus 2 power is 1 ninth, and 4 raised to the, uh, so I guess not properties of logs, properties of exponents, um, 4 raised to the minus 2 power is 1 over 16. And so bringing this all back over here, this lower bound is log of 1 ninth, and this upper bound is log of 1 over 16. Okay, what else can we do here? So this is where we are, but if you check the slides, this doesn't match any of the answers on the slides. So we still have to do a little bit more manipulation. And the manipulation we have to do is swap the bounds here, log of 1 ninth to log of 6, 1 16th, if we swap the bounds, we end up changing the sign of our integral. So the one half, sorry, the minus one half becomes a one half. It just is a theorem that says the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the negative of the integral from b to a of f of x dx. So I think some people are wondering, like, why do, why do we make this switch? Is there a more natural reason? But there's no more natural reason to have the bounds like this than the bounds like this here. Uh, e either one, either one works. Um, you know, I, I guess this is the slightly more natural uh, bounds here because uh, this this bound would be smaller than this bound here, but more. But I guess the principle is we can make the switch. And we have to match what was on what our answer choices were. So that's why I made the switch. Okay, so then the next one came from this problem where I basically was asking, has a mistake been made in the substitution? And so if we can kind of compare things here, x is getting replaced with u minus 6, which is equivalent to saying u is equal to x plus 6. And once we have that idea, we can see that everything here checks out. We replace x with u minus 6. 
x plus 1 is u minus 6 plus 1, which is u minus 5, so that checks out. When x is 0, u is 0 plus 6 is 6. When x is 1, u is 1 plus 6 is 7, so the bounds check out right. And du is equal to dx, so we can make that replacement. So this is a legitimate substitution. This is a perfectly fair application of our, of our substitution theorems here. It's just not getting us closer to the final answer. So this is a true statement, it just isn't necessarily a helpful one. So a student who writes this hasn't made a mistake on her test, you know, these two things are genuinely equal, it just isn't getting you closer to the final answer. If you want to get closer to the final answer, try sending u is equal to x plus 1, you'll make your life easier Although at this point in the course, we still don't know how to solve it. You have to solve this using integration by parts, which is coming up in a few weeks. And then finally, uh, the last one that I, that I want to go over is this problem here. The integral from 3 to 4 of e to the 2x times the square root of 1 plus e to the x dx is equal to this integral over here. And the key thing that we have to realize is that we are given bounds here of e to the 6 and e to the 8th here. So you might wonder, because was, the problem said, what goes in here? What's the integrand? So you might wonder whether, you know, to set, you know, u equal to 1 plus e to the x or just u is equal to e to the x. But we, but we don't really have the freedom to make those choices. Our hands are tied. We are forced to come up with a substitution u so that... When x is 3, u is e to the 6, and when x is 4, u is e to the 8. And it's pretty easy to see that e to the 2x does that trick. u to the 2 times 3 is e to the, e to the 2 times 3 is e to the 6, e to the 2 times 4 is e to the 8, so that checks out. Okay, so now we just have to crunch through everything here. du is 2e to the 2x dx du over 2 is equal to e to the 2x dx. So this right here is du over 2. And what else can we fill in here? So we so this d this part here becomes du over 2. So I'll put in 1 half. And so now we just have to figure out what is 1 plus e to the x in terms of u. And u is e to the 2x, and so the square root of u is, is e to the 2x to the 1 half power, and that's just e to the x. So what we see here, e to the x can be replaced with square root u. So square root of 1 plus e to the x becomes square root of 1 plus square root u. So again, this might not seem like a helpful substitution, but we were told, this is what the student is trying, what is the correct integrand at this point? So the student is attempting this substitution, this right here is a true statement.